Well, it's the beginning of a brand new week and in the words of the old adage, eat, drink and be merry, we can safely say we have done just that during the first week off our paid jobs. Now, as I talk to you today, Stephen returns to work after his week off and I am just about to start my second week. Now, it's such a shame that it's harder for him to take two weeks off, but that's just the way his work is. So after a somewhat indulgent week between us, the intention for this week is to make a steady start back onto the routines with healthier meals and more efficiency to our days. So this Monday needed to start by doing what had been getting put off, you know, all of the things that would sit in my head for the rest of the week if I didn't get them done this morning. The somewhat boring bits of being an adult and having your own home. So the pots got washed, the dirty clothes went into the washing machine, the fridge had a wipe out and the kitchen was ready to receive the goodies from the garden that were going to be coming in this week coming. Well, I didn't quite stretch to mop in the floors because, well, after all, as well as Stephen and I, we've got two teenagers and the three dogs running around and that was going to be the way for the full week. But not only that, we're bottle feeding two lambs at the moment and more often than not, the milk powder that's meant to go into the lambs ends up on the kitchen floor rather than in the bottles that it's intended for. Now, more often than not, when I'm planning my days off, I add a million and one things to my list of things to get done. And inevitably, they don't all get done. In fact, a small percentage of them get done, but we have had a fantastic first week off together as a family. So as I'm stood here washing the pots and getting my daily duties done, I'm thinking ahead to the coming weeks and months and what I want to try and achieve over those coming weeks and months. Not all in the next week, which is what I've got left off the paid job, because there's no way I'm going to be able to get everything done in one week. One thing that we really do need to get going with is meal prepping and planning again. So that is something that I intend to get put in place by the time I go back to the paid job. But not only that, as I move back into the paid job, I want to try and get into a routine where I'm getting things preserved on a more frequent basis, not every night, because that's just not doable. But I'd definitely like to get at least one canning session, so one preserving session, or actually even a freezer session, it doesn't have to be canning, in a week. So like I say, not necessarily a daily thing, but it's about time that we had a few more meals on those shelves because they're looking really, really sparse at the moment. So not only am I wanting to get organised inside and in the kitchen, we're also trying to get a much more efficient routine as we still got all of the animals inside the barn. By now, we hoped that there would be a lot more living outside and it would take a, a bit of a easier ride for us with some of the duties that we've got to do every single day, but that isn't looking like it's gonna happen at all in April. So we've got at least another two to three weeks of continuing like this. And you guys might have seen, but Stephen and I had a good tidy out of our tack room come storeroom in the barn. And we've got a few new ways and routines that are working really, really well. So one of my intentions in the coming weeks is to take you through the routine as we've got it at the moment. And then once things change and the animals head outside, it'll be the summer routine because I think we're pretty much going to be skipping the spring one, given that it feels as though we're still in a winter routine here. And especially seeing as though we've taken on two new lambs that are being bottle fed and we've also got the pigs which are growing bigger by the day. They're still living in the barn at the moment. We're hoping to get those out in the coming weeks, possibly into May as I say, but it's more so the horses routine that I'm talking about. They impact the day the most and that's not a problem. That's just the way it is. In some years we have to do the barn routine for a lot longer than in other years and it just seems to be that it's one of those years. So if we can get ahead with those jobs and get a really good routine going for an evening and a morning then it just helps out the next person that's coming along to do those jobs which at the moment is both myself and Grace so Grace is taking care of feeding the lambs and I'm taking care of most of the other jobs although we do share out the poultry jobs and that's changing at the moment because obviously you've seen that we've just put quite a few of the ducks in the freezer so that's one less job to do but it's all working out really well. Now, the last week, so our first week off, although it was a fantastic a fantastic week, it has been a super frustrating week weather-wise. If it's not been wet, raining, the wind has been taking your breath away and blowing an absolute gale. So we have had some sun-dappled days in between, but they were few and far between. So I haven't got round to using the outdoor kitchen as much as I wanted to. It has just been so cold. Now, to be quite honest, I would have said previously, put your coat on, put your hat on and crack on with it, Tracy 
icy but at the moment I just really don't want to be out there freezing cold I'm struggling when I get cold it's taken me a long time to get warm but the warmth and the sun will come I know it will but the waiting is turning out to be a lot harder than we thought that all said let's crack on with the day so you've been watching what i've been getting up to this morning on this kind of monday reset day i hate that kind of cringy type of phrase but that's essentially what it is for me and it seems to be working really well now amusingly the pony almost had one over on me this morning i put his breakfast in which is the blue tub that you can see me feeding lydia here and he decided i don't want that so i started panicking and thinking oh my goodness is he going to be ill again because he was recently ill and went off his food um, and it turns out actually he just didn't feel like eating it at the time that I put it in. I went over to Lydia and double checked that she was going to eat it to make sure that there wasn't anything funky with it that I couldn't smell that the horses could sense. She would have wolfed that down if I'd have given the chance. So after trying that and knowing that it was okay, I took it back into the pony who looked at me as if to say, what's all the fuss about? because I was starting to think that there might be another vet bill coming. Anyway, so my morning routine includes doing the horses, making sure they get fed, watered, and that they're comfortable for the day. They do get out at least once a day to stretch the legs and to make sure that they're everything inside are moving around and doing what they should do but I really cannot wait until they are out in the field and just being horses but until then we'll just carry on with the routine and just keep on going so this morning it's already been one of those mornings I seem to be the most ham-fisted does that even translate but the most clumsy I've been in a long time so that I've already smashed two glasses whilst I was doing the washing of the pots inside the house and after you see what I'm doing here, let's have a look what happens as soon as I head back in. I thought I'd get ahead of the game and carry all of the mugs in that we've had in the barn over the last few days. And instead of putting it in the sink to wash up, I just launched it across the kitchen, which was no fun for anybody, especially me, because then I had to get all of the dogs away so nobody stood on it and injured the paws and also clean up. So I'm actually using one of the dog's um, feed bags, which <laughs> turns out they're excellent as rubbish bins as well. They were a lot more durable. So I end up using those for all of the rubbish and I'm sat here thinking, how on earth have I managed to smash three things already this morning? And you know, it's still super early in the morning, but hey ho, let's crack on with the day. There's two other admin jobs that are really on my mind that I need to get done. This is me ordering the worm counts for all of the livestock, including the horses and also the pig movement form, finally getting that ticked off my list. I'm finally about ready to get started. I'm going to get the day kicked off with making some bread. So you guys saw me previously say that I was going to be doing a loaf of bread every day. That's been working out fantastically. I was getting into the routine of buying too much shop bought bread. This is not sourdough that I'm going to be making in the bread maker. This is just plain different varieties of, or different flavours rather, of bread, uh, but not sourdough. So today, I mentioned on one of my previous videos about doing some sun-dried tomato bread, um, and that requires some sun-dried tomatoes in olive oil. Oh my goodness, we absolutely love this bread. So I thought that's going to be a really nice one to share with you guys. And this afternoon for our evening meal, after all of our indul indulgences of last week, we're going to be having a chicken noodle soup tonight, or at least some of us are. And I thought well, that'll be really nice. It'll go really well with the sun-dried um, tomato bread. So the chicken noodle soup will be using the leftovers from the cockerel that you guys saw us dispatch um, and obviously cook. Now, I did get some footage, so let me bring you up to speed on that. I did get some footage um, of cooking the cockerel, so I literally put him in one of my big Dutch ovens. So I tried to use the um, my middle size one, it was far too small, which is fantastic because that meant it was a really heavy, a big bird. Did it say we worked at 2.4 kilos, I think Stephen said on that video. Anyway, so I had to get my big Dutch oven out just to safe it in. I filled it to the top with um, water and put it in the bottom of the egg, which is effectively a slow cooker. I didn't bring it to the boil beforehand because I've never done that before. I literally leave them in normally for 12 hours or if I put it in in the morning, it's normally done by the evening and that's from cold um, just because we don't want it to be basically if I put it in hot and then it might end up getting done too soon, etc, etc. But like I also said to you guys previously, the agar has been running cold. And so I thought everything's taken about double the amount of time. So I put it in for 24 hours, um, exactly the same as everything else. And then when I got it out, it looked amazing. I took the lid off the Dutch oven for the last few hours whilst I was pottering about finishing off what I was doing. 
took it out. I thought, oh, I'll just double check, obviously, that it's cooked. Nothing that has ever been in the alga for that long has ever not been cooked. Did that make sense? You know what I mean? It wasn't flipping cooked. I couldn't believe it. So I had to put what I call a fake oven, so our electric range oven on to finish it off um, and make sure that the bird got up to temperature which was really disappointing because I wanted to be able to just do it in the pan full of water method. Then we we're going to use all of the stock, um, which I've reheated and, and have used since, but I was a little bit wary of it because the bird was cooked separately. So the stock would have still had some juices in it that weren't thoroughly cooked off the bird, if that makes sense. But the reheating I was okay with anyway. But that, that, that's a different story, I guess. Talking about the bird specifically, the meat was absolutely fantastic. It's all of its meat was, well, most of its meat rather was on its legs. There was some decent uh, white breast meat on it though, which the kids really enjoyed. And we have got some left, which is what I'm gonna be using tonight for the chicken noodle soup. So I'm gonna get all of that picked off and then we will make another stock from the bones that are left. Um, which obviously I'll be much more comfortable using. Even though I think the first one would have been totally okay, I just used it to cook other things in and then drained that stock away. Um, so yeah, well, I'll be much more comfortable using the next one that I'm gonna make. So all that said, I didn't get any footage in terms of um, what I was wanting to do to show you how we were using it because obviously taking it out of the oven thinking, hang on, this isn't totally cooked, then having to cook it again in the electric oven um, I wasn't, you know, that's not something that I want to be sharing as uh, the best method of doing things because it's not. However, moving forward, once the alga is working hotter or I'll be using the slow cooker, I will definitely be doing the method where I put the bird, submerge it in water um, and then use the slow cooker to, to cook it through. We tend to find that from that size bird, we will only get two decent sized meals out of it in terms of um, the main meal that we would have it for and then leftovers in four of us for chicken soup for example we do tend to eat quite a bit of protein when, when we we start eating it so that's what's going to be happening tonight if i get chance i'll include the um, making of the soup on this video otherwise i'll show you what the bread turns out like which is exactly what we're going to be making now sun dried tomato bread in the bread maker absolutely delicious so easy very hands off once you've got the ingredients in literally going to take you through what they are now we are using plain white bread flour, um, which is 500 grams. So I'm just gonna weigh that out. I've zeroed the scales. So 500 grams of plain white bread flour, and then we're going to do yeast. I'm gonna do about one, and a one generous teaspoon of yeast. Maybe just a little pinch more in because it's quite a large loaf when it's finished. I'm gonna do one teaspoon of salt. And we're going to do one tablespoon of honey and that's what I'll be using in my bread moving forward instead of sugar. Really adds to the flavour in this recipe. I need to get this off. This is my fork for my tomatoes. So it's starting to crystallise this honey but it's uh, just clear runny honey. This is raw honey. Perfect. Now I've got a sticky fork. And I've already weighed out 100 grams of sun-dried tomatoes. Just let me clean this. And what we're going to do is just snip them using kitchen scissors into, into the bread maker pan. You could do 50 grams of sun-dried tomatoes, 50 grams of olives if you had them. I don't have any in. Oops. We really do like olives though. Do you know, I need a new pair of kitchen scissors. These are so flipping awkward to use. It's these that are one of those pairs that you know they come apart like a safety feature, but that's can you see how it just keeps catching. Now I've dropped my tomato. Oh no. So just chopping them up into bite-sized chunks basically. The colour of this bread is absolutely fantastic because it takes the colour on from the, the tomatoes. And then we're gonna add in some oil, and what I'm going to do is use the oil from the sun-dried tomato jar. And for this size loaf, I'm going to add two tablespoons of the oil. In fact, there's some left in here from where they've been sat. Perfect amount. So about two tablespoons of oil. So if you didn't have the any oil left, even though you've got some dried tomatoes in oil, you could just use olive oil. And if you have it and you want to, you could add in dried oregano or dried thyme, just a, a good sprinkle of each. I haven't got any to hand at the moment. And I know that it changes the flavour a little bit and the kids aren't too fussed on that. So I'm going to leave that out for now. If it was just me adding it, then I, uh, eating it, I'd be throwing it in. And then I'm going to weigh out my 
liquid, which is just water. And we're going to do about 300 ml of water because obviously we've got quite a bit of oil in there as well. Doesn't look very appetizing at all. That's what it looks like now. I'm going to get it in a bread maker just on the white bread setting and then I'll show you what it looks like later on when we're ready to eat it. Another job that I need to get done today, if you can hear me over the washing machine, is to get the eggs out onto our honesty stall at the front of the house. So we often, well in previous years, sell eggs. Any surplus that we've got, we just put them on a stall at the front of the house and people have come along, left some money in the tin. Um, we actually do it on PayPal now as well. So people can even easier just use friends and family option on PayPal. So otherwise, if they don't use that option, we end up getting some of the money charged um, as a PayPal fee, which is no good, obviously. So we need to get as many of these onto the honesty stall as possible. And this week I'm going to be cooking up some lovely egg recipes as well, which I'll hopefully share with you. And we've just taken an order for a week of Wednesday for 96 eggs, I think it was. So I need to make sure that we've got those, we keep those separate over the coming weeks so that next Wednesday we're able to fulfill that order. Well, it's just gone afternoon, literally. So we've had an early lunch, um, the kids and I. Stephen is obviously back to work today, as I said. And we're outside this afternoon and the weather is absolutely lovely. It is 26.8 degrees centigrade here in the greenhouse at the moment. It's really bright. I haven't got my cat, but I've got my sunglasses. So I'm going to just check what needs watering um, and then get some of the seeds sown and get all of the rest of the peppers that I started yesterday. So I've got a separate um, video, gardening video, um, that I'm in the middle of doing actually that's on the go so where I'm talking about doing the peppers and things like that so that's what's going to happen here for the next however many hours hopefully uh, hopefully it won't rain and put us off or anything like that so I'm going to listen to a book and literally just get, get my head down and get on with those kind of jobs that need doing I'm also going to do half an hour of weeding I thought if I do that every day then I'll hopefully be able to stay on top of them this year and not get overwhelmed overwhelmed like we had in previous years so I'll show you briefly in between what's going on but the next couple of hours is me doing that and updating the rest of the video for the kitchen garden video that I started yesterday. This little basket here is something that Stephen found a little job he's been doing recently and it's perfect for rinsing off my veggies from the garden when we're harvesting them but not only that as I'm getting these um, plant pots out of storage they've inevitably got cobwebs and things on them so it's just giving me a good chance just to kind of raise them up a little bit and just get everything washed off before I start filling them with peppers. Just gives me a chance to inspect them for any slugs, snails, the usual hidden wasp that I tend to find amongst these things. Okay, Buster. Well, I've just wrapped up that gardening video, so it's about time for me to go and feed all the animals in the barn and the rain is due in about 20 minutes. Apparently we're gonna be in for quite a downpour, so I'm gonna get the last job that I'm just working on out here complete go and get the animals fed in the barn but on the way I'm going to grab some rhubarb and some wild garlic because I'm going to put the wild garlic in our chicken noodle soup that we're having for our meal tonight and I'm going to make a quick rhubarb crumble to go with it as well soup and pudding that you can't beat it it used to be that people did a soup and pudding as like a frugal cheap meal but things are just so blooming expensive now there's no such thing is there anyway we are hopefully going to enjoy that a little bit later I'll join you back in the kitchen when I'm getting on with the soup but for now I need to go get those animals fed and finish off what I'm doing So for this chicken soup, we are going for one onion. We're going to do four carrots, um, some wild garlic. I think I picked about 10 leaves of wild garlic, a little bit of celery. This is just one stalk. You can put a couple of stalks in, but we're not totally keen on it. I'm going heavy on the garlic, um, just with Stephen still having that cold. Four cloves in there. And then I'm putting about half a teaspoon of dried thyme in. I have got thyme in the garden, but I totally forgot to bring it in. And if I'd remembered to bring some bay leaves in, I would have done that too. And we're going to go for about a litre of our own chicken stock. As I say, if I had the stock that was left from the chicken, um that we I talked about earlier i would have just put that in that would be absolutely delicious i'm going to get all this chopped up and then we'll see what's in the pan right i've got the onion celery carrots and garlic in here i'll add the wild garlic in last with the noodles obviously with this being i don't know if i said with the chicken being pre-cooked that'll go in last as well so i'm just going to cook this off and then we'll get the remaining ingredients in i'll add the broth in leave it to simmer soften all of these veggies up and we'll add the remaining ingredients in more towards the end this stock has got its chicken stock and it's got a layer of fat on the top which 
I could have used and I totally forgot. So I will keep that and use that to cook something else in. So it's a litre of chicken stock. Excuse the lighting, I have gone ahead and added the chicken, which you can see there, the noodles and the wild garlic. And I'm also going to add, add in a handful of frozen peas, the carrots and everything are now cooked. So it's just a case of heating this through and serving when we're ready. And of course, at that point, when everybody smelt food, it started to get super noisy. And then everybody realised that the bread was done in the bread maker, the soup was made. When can we eat? Can we eat now? So this bread is still steaming. Absolutely beautiful. Really, you should wait for it to stop steaming before you cut into it. But I didn't really get much choice if i hadn't have sliced it then i think it would have just been ripped apart look at the color of that it's absolutely delicious anyway thank you for joining me for this day in the life and i'll talk to you very soon